Welcome to Power Electronics Education Electronic Book Lecture to Power Switches This lecture is presented by Dr. Firuz Zare. The contents of this lecture are ideal and practical switches, losses, harmonics and EMI, types of switches, gate drives, power switches in different applications. So key elements in a power converter are power switches which operate at high voltage and or current. They chop DC or AC voltage current based on a pulse pattern generated by a controller to achieve a desired voltage or current. That means a controller can measure the output voltage and output current, compare with the reference, so the reference signal can be either current or voltage. So finally, the controller can generate the gate signal and this signal is applied to power converter which basically turn on and turn off the power switches and if we have a DC current or DC voltage here we can chop the current or voltage based on the pulse pattern generated by the controller that means we can synthesize any current or voltage waveform and then we can generate that one in high voltage, high power. So basically power electronic is um, power processing and is a mapping from low voltage into high voltage system. When we consider power switch as an ideal switch, that means the switch can handle unlimited current and blocks unlimited voltage so unlimited voltage and unlimited current and the voltage drop across the switch and leakage current through the switch are zero so that means when the switch is turned on the voltage across the switch is zero and the current through the switch is zero when the switch is off so the switch is turned on and off with no rise and fall times so that means no rise and fall times that means the switch is very fast so this assumption helps us to analyze a power circuit but for design and practical consideration we should consider real power switches in a real case ideal switches do not exist during switching transients there are significant switching losses as associated with dvdt and didt These phenomena depend on several issues such as characteristic of power switches, control signals, gate drives, stray parameters and operating points of the system. So suppose that the switch is in turn off state. So when we apply gate signal just at this stand, then the voltage across the switch is decreasing while the current through the switch is increasing. So here over this switching time what's happened the power dissipate in this switch which equals to voltage times of current means that this is the switching losses associated with turn on state then over this switching time the voltage across the switch is increasing while the current through the switch is decreasing and then we have these losses as well associated with turn off state so this is switching losses so over one cycle over one switching cycle which is defined as a TSW so we have one turn on and one turn off losses and then when the switch is on because the voltage across the switch the voltage drop across the switch is not zero so the voltage times of current defines the conduction losses so this is conduction losses but because assuming that the leakage current is zero so zero times of voltage means that the conduction loss when the switch is off is zero so in this case we can see that by changing the switching time either during turn on time or turn off time we may decrease the switching losses but the point is that we can increase the DVDT and the IDT 
these are main issues in power electronics because create significant overcurrent and over voltage and create significant EMI issue so real power components have limited power voltage and current handling capabilities they have also limited switching speed and that's because because of charging and discharging internal capacitors exist between the junctions which limit the maximum operating frequency and create switching losses also we have to notice that on a state and on off state resistance or voltage drop and leakage current create conduction losses so when we design a power electronic circuit we have to notice that we have to calculate the total loss associated with switching and conduction losses three major issues to design a power electronic systems are losses harmonics and EMI or electromagnetic interferences these issues affect system cost size efficiency and quality and is a trade-off between these factors it's very important to know these issues at the earliest stage of a design and select appropriate power switches so let's start with losses there are different types of losses in a power converter such as conduction loss and switching loss which happens in power switch when the switch is getting on and off when when the switch is in on state losses in a controller because controller consists of microcontroller um, op amps and comparator they consumes power and losses due to charging and discharging stray inductances and in some applications when we have a planar bus bar or significant stray capacitance they can create also losses so when a switch is turned on or off energy is lost during the switching transients when operating points of the switch are changed from on to off state to active state so that means suppose that the switch is off and now we apply gate signal and then the switch is getting on over this switching time so at this point the switch is in on state so this is the voltage drop across the switch so the point is that the point is that because power as I mentioned before equals to voltage times of current so that's why this is the switching losses when the switch is getting on and we know that when the switch is off normally leakage current through the switch is zero so that's why we don't consider conduction loss when the switch is off but because the voltage across the switch is not zero depends on the switch but the forward voltage is not negligible so voltage times of this current creates this conduction loss that we will consider in the total loss when we consider the conduction loss so same scenario happens when the switch is getting off that means over this cycle the voltage across the switch is increasing the current through the switch is decreasing so this is the switching loss when the switch is getting off so finally these are the total switching losses and this is the conduction loss and finally we can define the total loss which consists of switching loss and conduction loss so the average power loss in a switch over one switching cycle which is defined as a TSW is given by the following equation so this is the total loss average loss over one switching cycle so basically we can calculate based on this equation this is the current through the switch this is the voltage across the switch so then finally we can define as a conduction loss and switching loss so assuming that the on and off switching time are small compared to switching cycles so that means in this case also assuming that the leakage current through the switch is zero so they can we can easily find the conduction loss so conduction loss is voltage drop across the switch times of current through the switch suppose that over one switching cycle current is constant 
and times of this ratio this ratio means that 10 on time over switching cycle which is basically defined as a duty cycle so finally we can simplify this equation and the conduction loss average conduction loss over one cycle is the voltage drop across the switch times of current through the switch and times of duty cycle means the turn on over switching cycle we can calculate the switching loss based on instantaneous current and voltage waveforms normally we approximate the current and voltage waveforms to be able to find the switching losses but in real case it's quite difficult and challenging because we need high bandwidth measurement circuits with low strain inductance to be able to measure the voltage and current waveforms accurately so let's look at the switching losses basically switching losses over one switching cycle is given based on this equation that means this is the switching loss associated with the time that the switch is getting on and this is the switching loss when the switch is getting off and T1 is the time that we apply a gauge signal and TSW on is the switching time when the switch is getting on and here T2 is the time that we remove the gauge signal and TSW off is the switching time when the switch is getting off we can show that the switching loss is proportional to the switching frequency that means based on this simple equation which shows that the switching frequency equals to 1 over switching cycle then we can put in the previous equation and the switching loss equals to switching frequency times of switching losses associated with on and off time so in this case we can see that by increasing the switching frequency the switching loss is increased but we know that by increasing the switching frequency we can improve the quality we can reduce the harmonics and ripple in all power electronic systems there are stray inductances and capacitances due to interconnection between the power components via wire conductor plates and or any other types of conductors in a power electronic circuit when we turn on and off a switch we may charge and discharge a stray inductance associated with the current loop as shown in the following figure that means suppose that this current loop has this strain inductance so once we turn on the switch we have this current through the inductor so that means suppose that the current is given this equation so we store energy in this inductor and once we switch off that means the current to the inductor these appears that means we actually lose this power the second issue is that once we switch off if this is the current through the inductor then we decrease it down to zero so this is basically if this is the current so basically this is significant the IDT and this times of a strain inductance gives over voltage and that over voltage appears across the switch and it may damage the switch so that's why because of two issues extra losses and also over voltage we should reduce the strain inductance same scenario happens when we have a stray capacitance that means when the switch is off we charge the stray capacitance which may appear across the switch or if you have a plate copper plate so parallel copper plates means that we create stray capacitance so once we charge this capacitor that means we provide voltage across the switch and that means the energy store in the capacitor associated with this equation 
and that's the voltage across the capacitor. So what's happened when we turn on the switch, in this case we discharge the current through the switch. There are two issues. Again, we lose this energy. That means over one cycle if we have turn on and turn off every time we charge and discharge the capacitor. The second is that when we turn on and turn off that will be the voltage waveform. So that means we have different DVDT here times of stray capacitance gives current. So the current depends on DVDT and stray capacitance. So if this stray capacitance is significant, then we have a significant current through the switch which may damage the switch. Finally, the average power loss due to these stray components over one switching cycle is given by this equation. So this is the average power loss. If we have multi current loops, so we have these losses due to stray inductances and stray capacitance. So instead of 1 over switching cycle, we can write switching frequency because this one, this is equal to switching frequency. So that means again, by increasing the switching frequency, we increase the total loss, but again the advantage is that we can reduce the harmonics. In a power electronic system there are other circuits such as gate drives, controllers, sensors and passive filters which consume powers and also extra losses associated with these uh, components. So when we are talking about filters that means the capacitors inductors can consume the power and that's because they're not ideal components. When you're talking about for example sensors basically different sensors like over voltage, over temperature, over current and a snowball circuit they may consume power. When you're talking about controller basically controller consists of logic device for example microcontroller or A to D or D to A so they consume power and also analog circuit like operational amplifier or comparator they consume power and when we are talking about gate drives that means the gate drive either high side gate drive low side gate drive or the other logic device to control the dead time they consume power so in this case we consider extra power as P other which is associated with these losses. So when we calculate the total loss in a power electronic system, so we should consider this loss as well.